Trail Runners, welcome back to Chasing Gold Bandera Edition, where we are heading to Texas and we are talking with some of the top athletes trying to get one of those golden tickets into the Western States Endurance Run. Today on the show, we welcome a legend of the sport, Nicole Bitter. Nicole runs with Ultra S Fuels Ultimate Direction, Dry Max Socks, and she has some pretty big wins in this sport. She has won at Javelina, the Black Canyon 100K, Brazos, Ben 50 Milo, Rocky Raccoon, multiple top tens at Western States. Nicole, welcome to the show. Thanks, that might have been the best um, introduction I've ever gotten. <laughs> I feel like I'm very honored. Uh, as you should be. You have such range in this sport. Uh, obviously, you've been in the sport over a decade and have been competing at the highest level for over a decade. So uh, you're a role model for all of us. So thank you. Thank you for what you do. No, thank you. It's just reminding me that I'm getting old. But, <laughs> you know, that's part of the fun. It is part of the fun. All right, let's chat. You are coming off in a great performance at Javelina running 15-16, uh, third place, just missing a golden ticket. Coincidentally, that was almost the same time, 15-17, you won at Javelina in 2020. How are you feeling with that performance and what has your training looked like after Javelina? Yeah, no, I was... I was um, really happy with my performance. I felt like I gave it my all on that day. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's all you can ask for. Um, like I said, I know I'm getting a bit older, so I'm just trying to soak it in, right? I feel like I'm kind of running with borrowed time. Um, I'm just thankful to be running after 30 years at this point. Um, and so after Havelina, um, really jumped back into training pretty quickly. I was feeling good and I was supposed to run um, UTCT in Cape Town. Um, unfortunately, the first day I was in town, went out on a training run and um, really sprained my ankle pretty badly. Oh. So um, that wasn't ideal. Um, I've never had that happen before, but you know, again, that's part of the sport. So. Um, was fortunate to get to see Cape Town and um, we'll have to go back out there to run the race because it looks pretty incredible. But uh, I actually was really fortunate and recovered really quickly from that. I, I think I was running within 10 days, which was really beyond what I expected looking at, you know, given my ankle. So again, just kind of figured why not give it a shot at Bandera. I've been out on that course before. Now I live in Texas. So figured it was would be a fun you know way to start bringing the new year absolutely yeah and obviously cape town that is some steep technical track um whereas bandera not so technical i know some say it's a little technical um but definitely more runnable just like javelina was right there's a few technical sections or rocky sections do you think a course like bandera does that more suit your running style um Mm, what do you think? Yeah, I, I like Bandera. It's pretty similar to what I train on. Um, Javelina is like buttery smooth, right? To me, I, I love that type of running too. But Bandera throws in some extra complications with the rocks. Um, so it slows you down a bit. But um, I love the Texas trails. So just kind of happy to be back where I started trail running in the first place. So um, I do like the Bandera course a lot. Yeah, and you've been on it. You obviously have a third place and a second place, and it looks like you were recently on the course not too long ago. Um, knowing the course, knowing that, like, yeah, there are those punchy climbs, then there's a flattish section, then more punchy climbs, and it's a two-loop course. What things do you take from your course knowledge that will help you on race day? Are you trying to run loop one a little slower than loop two, or how do you approach the race this year? You know, I'm one of those people, I don't even wear a watch, so it's nice. kind of hard to uh, even know what my time is, aside from just kind of looking at the clock um, and glancing over when I, when I complete a loop. I really run by feel, so I'm just going to go out at my pace. I really, at this point, kind of just run my own race. I 
I find that I just do best in that type of environment. So um, I know there will be some really great ladies there running, um, you know, hard. So I just plan on kind of doing my own thing. And I don't really have a plan, which probably, you know, that's just how I, that's kind of always how I've operated, which, you know, sometimes doesn't result in the best of um, circumstances. But for the most part, I think I just kind of um, problem solve as I go. Yeah, and I think running by feel, especially on a course like this, like I love a course like this for trail runners that run by feel because what you have, right, you have that a steep descent followed by a steep ascent and they're very punchy and I think a lot of inexperienced runners can take too much speed on the downhill and try to hold that on the uphill and really push out of aerobic threshold and over the course of 100 kilometers, I think it could be detrimental. So what are you doing? I think... It's worked for you in the past, and I hope it works for you in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I think I, um, I think I ran most recently in 2017, and I, I do recall that the first loop I probably ran a little too fast, and then I paid a bit the second loop. So just gonna try and um, use my um, older lady um, strength to, uh, to maybe pace a little bit better that first loop. So that's. You know, I think, but to your point, really running by feel and just um, locking in a good pace, I think that's a success for 100K. Absolutely. And what about in performance? What is your fueling and hydration strategy look like? Are you someone that uses the same uh, similar product at intervals? Or are you kind of going by feel on that as well? Yeah, um, you know, I'm pretty flexible. I'm pretty fortunate that I can get away with a lot from a fueling perspective, but I don't have like a prescribed time that I take fuel at. Um, I use S fuels, which suits me well, um, but I also go off aid station food um, as I'm, you know, depending on what I'm um, craving at the time. So um, I really do listen to my body to the same way that I um, prescribe to pace as well. So probably not the person to um, always be telling you about, you know, the, the most um, scientifically proven results, but that's, that's what's always worked for me. Absolutely. Um, and you are from Texas. So like I said, you have, you have familiarity with the weather. Last year, it was a very foggy, wet day, which can make the rocks uh, a little slick. Obviously, it's still too early to, to figure out what the weather looks like. Is there a certain weather day you are hoping for? Are you hoping it's hot? Are you hoping it's rainy? Anything like that? I love the heat. So the hotter it is, the better off for me. Um, I'll take that any day. But the last two times I ran Bandera was 2015 and 2017. And both years were pretty were pretty cold. I think the first year it was sleeting and raining quite a bit. Yeah, so I was looking back at pictures recently and I saw one and definitely was a, a cold day. And then 2017 was really frigid. I think the um, there was ice on the bridge on the way out to um, the starting line. So, you know, I, I definitely have run in that kind of condition and uh, so I can I can run in the cold. I actually am from Chicago, so I grew nice. up running around Lake Michigan in college, and you know, so I'm I'm ready to go if it's a cold day. But I I definitely would prefer the heat if that's if you know if I get my way. Sure, sure. All right, and you are running this. We're hoping to get you a golden ticket. You have a lot of experience at states. This will hopefully be your seventh visit, I believe. You've got some top tens there. What is your draw to get back to states? Is it the history? Is it the competition? Is it just the epicness of the race? Why, why states? Why would you like to get back there? You know, I wish I knew the answer to that question. I, you know, for me, I just feel like um, I, I do like the race, um, but there are a lot of other races that I am happy to run. I think it's the competition and I truly like the golden ticket races leading up to states. I love Javelina. I love Bandera. I love Black Canyon. So that's part of the draw for me. I love those courses. Um, so, you know, I, um, but I wish I, I wish I knew exactly what was driving me. I think, um, I'm probably just one of those people that, that is drawn to competition. Sure. Awesome. That is going to lead us into 
the 10 question fast pace fart lick round. Nicole, are you ready? Probably not. <laughs> All right, question number one. What sneakers will you be wearing at the Bandera 100K? I will be wearing the Mont Blanc Boas. Great shoe. All right, favorite local trail and why? Ooh, so I love the Greenbelt. It's about a mile away from the home, and it's just the quintessential Texas trail um, in Austin. So give Perfect. it a try. How about race superstitions? Do you have any? You know, probably not anymore. I've kind of run the gamut. I think in junior high, I used to wear like special socks and such, but I nothing at this point. <laughs> Nice. All right, we have New Year's coming around the corner. Do you have any resolutions? You know, just to keep just to keep going, to keep trucking. Um, in terms of changes, maybe throw in a little bit more speed work on my runs. Sure. All right, Texas has the saying, don't mess with Texas. Let's have you finish this sentence. Don't mess with blank. My little new Aussie dog, Minnie. She's oh. got a fierce little bite. Oh, adorable. All right, how about a pre-race breakfast? Ooh, I usually have a bagel and peanut butter. Mm. All right, you get to select the song that starts the Bandera 100K. What is your walkout song going to be? Ooh, that's a tough one. Maybe <laughs> I Am a Tiger. Oh, love it. Love it. All right. They say everything is bigger in Texas. I guess you're living there, so you know. What one Texan item do you think holds true on that and is always bigger? Probably just the taste of the barbecue here. Um, the barbecue, it's not, it's just amazing. So in the sense of being bigger, better in Texas. That was going to be one of my, my fartlet questions to all the athletes was, which style of barbecue do you like best? But I wasn't sure if ever anyone would know that Texas is the home of barbecue. Oh, yeah. You've got to get it when you're down here if you're coming in. It's, Absolutely. You know, it's remarkable if you're a meat eater. All right. Number nine, secret weapon on race day. Do you have anything like a special drink you take late in the race or uh, something, anything? Ooh, I love the S Fuels, the Caffeine Boost, the Prime. Mm. I'm a fan. Nice. Final question, and it is the most difficult. Nicole, what place are you finishing the Bandera 100K in? You know, the best that I can do on that day. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> the best I, that's the best answer. So objection, non-responsive. We'll take it. Nicole, we will see you at the Bandera 100K in Texas. Great. Thank you for having me. I was honored. Thank you.